All right, everyone, we got to talk about the Netflix documentary, The Social Dilemma. You may not know this about me, but I'm a privacy engineer and a software engineer on top of doing tech research for a living. So you can imagine I got pretty excited when Netflix released a documentary all about the tech industry's role in spreading misinformation and how they turned our brains to mush for profit. Like, seriously, I was genuinely excited. But man... When I saw this, I felt so much cringe and confusion that I wasn't sure I wasn't just watching The Office. And because I don't want anyone else to fall to the same fate. For your sanity and mine, The Social Dilemma, and why you definitely should not watch it. This documentary explores how the tech industry and the rise of attention-stealing government-toppling social media machines like Facebook, Twitter, and for some reason, Gmail. Like, a guy literally says, And I, you know, felt personally addicted to email. And I found it fascinating there was no one at Gmail working on making it less addictive. Are coming for what's left of your humanity. At least that's what they want you to believe. In reality, this film is closer to Vice than an actual documentary in terms of its portrayal of the tech industry, but even Vice bothered with trivial things like facts. No, I can only describe these wasted 90 minutes as a formulaic, loosely connected assortment of out-of-context quotes set to ominous campaign ad music. Actually, I should probably just break down the narrative so you don't feel compelled to go watch it yourself. We open with a quote by everyone's favorite Greek playwright, Sophocles. Nothing vast enters the life of mortals without a curse. Then we get a bunch of out-of-context excerpts introducing our tech experts. Various members of the Silicon Valley elite who held high-ranking positions in tech companies like Google, Facebook, and whatever the hell Palm is. They're all trying to answer a simple question. What's the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? As I struggle in what I can only describe as a kaleidoscope of cutaways, the title finally appears. Now, the title card is weird because they use it to introduce us to what I'm going to refer to as generic modern straw family, a nondescript American family they frequently throw into awkward situations in an attempt to punctuate the film's points. Don't worry about remembering them because they really aren't that important. For the rest of the film, things get just as formulaic. Instead of weaving a realistic examination of the rise of social media and its impact based in facts, in-depth analysis of events, and examinations from multiple first-hand accounts, we instead wade through awkwardly organized chapters that are more or less structured exactly the same. First, start with a random historic quote that relates to what the editor thought was going to be discussed. Then go grab some out of context quotes from your experts. Cut back and forth between the experts talking in a series of overproduced random animations or campy representations of the algorithm and forced dramatizations of Straw Family in hopes that it will punctuate what's going on in the narrative. And this may be the most important thing. Play very loud, very ominous music over the interviews and scenes and everything else to trick viewers into believing this is meaningful. Like, I'm not remotely kidding about how formulaic this is. They start a section with the classic Arthur C. Clarke quote, then they jump right into Tristan Harris, co-founder of the Center for Humane Technology, giving a random anecdote about learning magic as a child, and then they just kind of meander around what technology means to each of them while ominous music blares over top. If you closed your eyes, you could have confused it for Inception. I hate to see out of control. The weird thing is, after about 80 minutes of random anecdotes, ominous music, and Straw Family falling apart at the seams, they slap you in the face by trying to end on a high note about how technology isn't actually evil. In fact, it's just people are evil for trying to make money right after conflating the Hong Kong protests with the misinformation campaign during the presidential election in 2016 in the United States. And just to show everything will be okay, some hacker hacks the planet and freezes all from targeted ads. Now, I really do want to be fair to this movie because I think they had some really good ideas. So I, as a privacy engineer, would like to say I really appreciate what they tried to do with this film. The internet has allowed for the rise of companies and computational systems so advanced that even the people who made them aren't sure how they work. The filmmakers are trying to appeal to all of us that this is a problem that we need to take seriously by forcing these companies to be accountable to us. And I really believe they tried their best to do it in an engaging way that is approachable to people of all backgrounds. Unfortunately, there's some major issues with how they represent this information that I can only describe as problematic. The most obvious off the bat are the experts. I have no doubt that every person they interviewed for this film has had a prominent role at a tech company relevant to this film. The problem is that you usually want to interview people so that they can give multiple first-hand accounts on the same event. Reporting on animal abuse? 
try asking multiple people who worked at the same zoo for their different perspectives on how the animals were handled. You can then try and focus on the facts from each situation and provide context to fill in the gaps. You know, like how Tiger King did it. Instead, we get out of context snippets from each expert that are tied together to say things to the effect of, it's manipulation. And you are a lab rat, we're all lab rats. This is problematic because the interviews are so chopped up that it completely undermines the context and content of the discussion, thus undermining the roles of the experts. This also brings up the issue of the cutaways. To help restore some meaning to the interviews, they cut back and forth to a black mirror nightmare of the inside of the algorithm, random animations that loosely relate to the concept of technology, I guess, and my personal favorite, the straw family. Now, I keep calling this generic family straw family because they literally only seem to serve as a straw man to punctuate how these companies are going to ruin the idea of a nuclear family and get our kids sad, anxious, and thrown in jail. This is equal parts misleading and unnecessary. First of all, it's pretty unfair to use one single family as a proxy for all Americans, and I do mean all Americans. This is a very US-centric documentary. On top of that, the situations are overly manufactured to seem related to what's being discussed, which is even more garish when you learn that there are actual recent examples of actual families being impacted by the exact technologies discussed in ways that better punctuate these points. There's a literal story of a father discovering his teenage daughter was pregnant through targeted ads from Target, because of course you can't make this stuff up. The family is also mixed in with these shots of the algorithm selling ads, which is literally just some guy talking to himself on a green screen. Again, I get it. It's hard to explain machine learning to an audience of people who don't normally interact with computers on this level. But I don't think that means you shouldn't try. People literally watch this film because they are interested in the topic. It's not that hard to explain it. Here, I'll show you. Imagine you wanted to teach a computer something like, I don't know, how to play chess. Instead of teaching it all the rules of chess, you teach it how to watch people playing chess. That way, with every game of chess it watches, it gets a little better and better. Eventually, it'll start learning tricks and things that you would never even think to program into it. Tricks you probably don't even know exist. Now, imagine, instead of watching chess, it's watching you and learning what you like. See what I did? I showed that the machine is just trying to learn based on how we are teaching it. Unfortunately, instead they choose to show some evil weirdo actively tricking a boy into watching hate speech in hopes he will buy more shoes or something. I, I don't know, they keep it really vague. This is super problematic because it portrays technology as sentient and evil, actively trying to screw us over, and shifts attention away from the actual corporate incentives that led to their creation, a problem that comes more from ignorance and misplaced values than actual malice. And just because I really couldn't not notice this, if the images and the way they portray the experts wasn't enough to tip you off, the music makes it pretty clear that this film has a massive bias against tech companies and targeted ads. And it just makes you feel anxious, distracting you from any substance they might have left in the movie. Like here, listen to this clip. We probably degrade the world's democracies so that they fall into some sort of bizarre autocratic dysfunction. We probably ruin the global economy uh, we probably um, don't survive. Tell me you didn't just fall into an anger-induced nihilistic spiral that makes authoritarianism seem reasonable. After watching the film, I actually came to find this bias rather funny. I definitely don't think they meant it this way, but they basically create an unintentional meta-commentary on how technology biases us in the way they made their own film, by trying to bias us towards a specific conclusion by speaking to emotion rather than anything of real substance. Fortunately, the one smart thing I think they did in the film, after 80 minutes of agony, at which point no one would be blamed for turning the film off, was ending on a positive note. Seems like you're very optimistic. Is that how I sound? <laughs> yeah. <I mean. laughs> Even though it comes off as the weirdest cognitive whiplash and a clear indicator that they were cherry picking how they portrayed the excerpts from the interviews, they try to highlight how no one actually thinks the companies are bad. And some even claim to like them despite their ability to topple democracy itself. One interviewee literally says, It's my world. It's my community. I don't hate them. I don't want to do any harm to Google or Facebook. I just want to reform them so they don't destroy the world. And again, it would be great at showing that these aren't evil algorithms, but just impressive code left unchecked. It's just really unfortunate that it also causes us to completely re-examine everything they showed us throughout the documentary. I would genuinely be eager to talk to anyone who was interviewed for this film or to see their full uninterrupted interviews, as they probably would have provided more meaning and insight than what we got in the final edit. 
the only problem being that without the obnoxious cutaways, I imagine the documentary would barely crack 40 minutes. And if you're still hoping to watch a documentary that meaningfully examines the topics of targeted ads and the divisiveness of social media in a balanced way, then I highly recommend you go check out The Great Hack. It's an excellently crafted examination of how Cambridge Analytica and Facebook influence national elections in the UK, US, and Ukraine that does everything in this documentary a thousand times better. And it's also on Netflix, so you don't even have to worry about stealing a password for a different streaming service. Seriously, go watch The Great Hack and then come back and thank me in the comments. 